Listen, I get it. Gas is $9 a gallon. Inflation soon to be in the triple digits. You have to take out a personal loan just to buy groceries. All around the world, people are hurting for money. And one of the ways you can fix that, make some more money, get a side hustle, is to sell things on eBay. So in this video, we're going to talk about a few things that I've sold in the past week or so on eBay out of this building right here. This is where I work. Everything here is for sale or should be for sale. And I think that I can teach you a few of the basics uh, and hopefully you will learn and not just watch. If you watch, that's okay too. But my goal here is to teach you maybe one or two in the, you know, over the course of this video, valuable bits of information that you can then take and apply in your own life uh, to make some more money so you're not, you know, scavenging through uh, other people's trash or, or holding up armored cars to pay for your lifestyle. My name is Blake. Let's go. If you are new here, and I'm sure there must be dozens of you who are, we adhere to a pretty, pretty basic process or structure in these what sold on eBay videos. Now, I am not exclusively an eBay seller. I sell on Amazon, Mercari. I do lots of other stuff, but I think eBay is one of the most fun ways to sell unique items. I primarily on eBay uh, am focusing on one-of-a-kind stuff or relatively unique stuff. Uh, obviously, they made a whole bunch of these pictures, for example, but there's only one picture just like this as opposed to retail arbitrage or wholesale which is not uh, very unique at all. I'm not saying those are not good business models. I do that on Amazon quite a bit more, but I think it's quite boring content. At least I don't want to watch content like that. I want to make videos that I want to watch. So here we are going through the unique things I've sold over the past 10 or 15 days, uh, and they're all going to be what I think are relatively you know, good sales. This one right here. Volrath stainless steel pitcher. I thought it was vintage, not vintage. Relatively modern, as you can see on the bottom. Well, you can't because I uh, <laughs> you can't load those photos right now. Uh, it did say made in China. Uh, the company Volrath is from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. So I thought it was old, at least old enough to be made domestically. It wasn't. If it was older, I think I would have sold it for probably fifty bucks. I think is what I would have priced it at instead. Even though it's all dinged up, it's beat up, it's bent in, in various ways, it's sold for $29.95 plus $12.95 shipping, and it went to a gentleman in rural Kansas. Who knows what he'll be doing with this pitcher, this two-quart pitcher. I bought it at a Goodwill. Uh, I think I only paid 3 bucks for it, so... Uh, after shipping and fees, let's see, the fees on this sale is going to be about $5, $6. Uh, I did make a pretty decent profit, and that's going to be, you know, I'm not going to go through the profit on all of these, but just so you know, uh, on, on, on eBay, you take the entire revenue, uh, and then 15% of that generally is going to be your fees. Uh, the reason I do plus shipping is on these one-off items that I sell, if the buyer wants it, the buyer wants it. I'm not really competing for like search placement the way you would with retail arbitrage or anything that has like a lot of supply, more or less. Uh, not a lot of supply on this Volrath stainless steel pitcher 82020. That's the model number right there. Uh, not a lot of supply there. Demand was enough to sell one. Would I buy 15 of these? If I can get them for a buck a piece, I probably would, but um. In terms of the how much you know how many are going to sell a month one maybe two, I bought this in late January early February, and it finally sold in early March. So uh, that's pretty much all you need to know about this stainless steel pitcher. Bought a border terrier puppy dog hanging wall art by Michael Park Woodcarver, and you're going to notice. Look at that. I've got other things in the back of my photo. Is that the best practice? No. Does it potentially clue a buyer onto other things I have if they're just perusing through listings? Yeah, I think so. 
This one, again, not new. There's a little bit of, uh, of wear near my thumb there. Yeah, it is very nice, very intricate. Michael Park, who made this, his name's in the back. Uh, he's very good at making this kind of carving. He's not, like, famous, but um, he is somebody who has a semi-large following, I think, over the past 90 days. Uh, two or three of his, uh, their snow globes with little carved wooden guys inside sold for about 30 bucks. This one sold, uh, I started on March 5th. It sold March 6th. So like overnight it sold to a local buyer, somebody only like, an, you know, less than an hour away from where I live. Uh, now that I'm on the topic of that, I would never in a million years hand deliver anything to anyone's house unless it absolutely demanded it. Uh, not only, you know, with the cost of gas and everything creeping up, but um, to save $5, but to spend an hour of your time is essentially saying my time is only worth $5 an hour, and my time is not worth that little. Uh, it went first-class mail. Pretty easy to bubble wrap up and make sure it's safe. Uh, and I have not heard back yet from the buyer, but I assume everything went nicely. Here's an interesting one. 2CD Super Eurobeat presents the best of Euromach. It sold for on a best offer. Uh, I ended up um, selling it for 40 bucks instead of 49.95. Uh, with ship media mail for like 3.19. Went to an in no, it didn't go to an international buyer. Went to a domestic buyer, uh, and um, they gave me positive feedback. Apparently, they did not like the condition of the CD case, but not enough to leave uh, a neutral or negative feedback. I think they were very happy just to get the CDs. Uh, the sales rank on this on Amazon, which again, this is eBay. There's no sales rank on eBay. On Amazon there is though. And just for a basic rundown, the sales rank is like how good items are to sell, how fast they sell. So like the number one sales rank CD is gonna sell all the time. Uh, and in this case, this sales rank was over 100,000. I think it was in the 150,000 or maybe 200,000 range. Uh, it would have taken a long time to sell on Amazon. It sold in, you know, in just about two and a half weeks on eBay. And I did not put any special keywords in there. You know, just what I'm seeing on the, uh, on the cover of the CD. And uh, it was 50 cents into 40 bucks. We're looking at, what is that, like 36 and change after shipping uh, and after fees, about 30 bucks. So about 30 bucks profit for my uh, initial 50 cent investment. Who doesn't want to do that? I bought a bunch of art in some previous thrift hunt videos and uh, a lot of people, myself included at certain times, were not totally positive it would sell, but hey, it is selling. This one sold for 30 bucks, free shipping. Now the reason I did free shipping on this is because initially it was at $50. That's what it was initially. Uh, took an offer on this. And the only reason I took an offer so low is because the buyer was in Indianapolis. I am in Michigan. And so I knew it wouldn't be very expensive to ship. If this had to go out to California, it'd be like 22 bucks in shipping. And I paid $5 for it. I could not identify the person's name. Um, the keywords I used, sand, zen, textures, rocks, minimalist. Uh, I don't know which keywords they liked but I'm assuming it's the Zen or the minimalist because those are the ones that I've, I've seen have the most traction on them. So if you're trying to find keywords to describe one of a kind stuff, Zen and minimalist are good ones. Here's a cool Jehovah's Witness book, 1958. You can see it's not in the best condition. Neither is my floor, yikes. <laughs> uh, not in the best condition, some, some scratches, some dirt on there. But the interior pictures were fine. It's like, I think, a five-color print. Pretty cool. 1958. I had it uh, listed initially at $34.95. I ran a 25% off sale for every book under 40 bucks, I think, if I recall correctly. Five bucks to ship. Went to a buyer in Florida or Georgia, somewhere down there. And uh, I have not gotten feedback yet. But I think that they, uh, I think they're gonna like it because it was the only, only uh, existing book at the time. There was a pretty decent sales history, but whenever you have the market cornered, you can always go a little bit higher, even if the condition is not the best. This book, I think I may have priced this too low. 
I think I may have priced it too low because it, I listed it uh, on March 4th and it sold on March 4th. It sold in like a half an hour. Uh, E.M. Forster, who is a famous author, A Passage to India, right there. Uh, the Not the best dust jacket, but it does have the dust jacket. Without the dust jacket, it sold for about 20 bucks. I don't know if 20 bucks more or doubling for that matter is a good strategy for a uh, no dust jacket versus dust jacket. I just went by feel. It sold in a half hour, so I probably priced it too low because this is kind of a, a, a relatively high demand author and title. How high could I have gone? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, maybe 60, maybe 80. It went to a rich guy in California. It didn't go to a book reseller, so it wasn't so low that they're buying to flip. Uh, but I'm always curious when I'm leaving a little bit extra on the table. This, again, was a book from 1924, although I think, actually, it might be a little bit after that. I think this, uh, this, this modern library edition came out in the 30s or 40s, but the copyright date said 1924, uh, and so that's what I put in the title. And as long as you're doing that, not many buyers are going to expect you to know all the details, all the ins and outs. And I'm not, I'm not even sure that it really is from the 30s or 40s. I'm just, I've seen a lot of these books, and I've seen a lot of this style of a dust jacket. And they are not from the 20s. But who knows, maybe that's why it sold so fast. Maybe it was a groundbreaking new technological dust jacket innovation that I just was totally ignorant of. This will be the cheapest sale of the day. It's uh, our Sony RM-U242 stereo receiver remote for the STR-D515 and the STR-D615. I would almost rather sell these remotes than the actual receivers themselves because the receivers themselves weigh like 30 pounds and if you do free shipping or you don't do the right calculated shipping or whatever you do and it ends up going like to California or even worse, Alaska or Hawaii, you're going to pay so much money. And what I've begun doing with these more uh, heavy items that I sell, so like I've got that giant vase, the Murano vase. I've got some large electronics. I will not ship it to Alaska, Hawaii, or for that matter, for the Virgin Islands or Guam or any of the other places that the post office delivers to uh, i will only ship those big things to the contiguous united states but these little re receiver remotes i'll ship these anywhere this goes first class mail just popped into a bubble mailer i paid a dollar for it maybe 50 cents sold for 20 bucks in about three weeks two and a half weeks uh, and that's just an easy way to get some sales going some more art that i sold the mermaid uh, back that's the name of the print the Mermaid's Back, by Bahamian artist Marjolene Scott, signed and numbered. It's a print, though, not an original watercolor. If it was an original watercolor, I would have charged probably 80 bucks, I think, but it's a print. Uh, this went to a buyer in Texas. They paid full price, 40 bucks. I offered free shipping because it w was because it's a print. It's It weighs like, it weighed more than a pound, but it was like a pound and eight ounces. So it only shipped for like nine or ten dollars. This one, a lot of these are on, uh, I made like Instagram reels or TikTok. So you may have seen some of these before. But in those short form contents on TikTok and Instagram and wherever, I can't really go into detail about what I was thinking when I bought this. Bought these in early February for a thrift hunt video. Paid ten bucks for the two of them. And that was kind of high. I remember being like, eh, five bucks a piece. That's kind of high. Should I do that? Well, they sold for, uh, it was not $88. It ended up being, I took an offer of 50 bucks and then they paid $10 shipping. So with these items that can explode because they're pressurized gases, this goes in the, this goes in the Freshmatic spray refill. I shipped these UPS ground. You could do parcel, USPS parcel, because that goes in the ground as well. But I like to just choose USPS ground because I think the post office is not as good. As, uh, as UPS. When I, whenever I say, if I'm saying USPS ground, that's wrong. It's UPS ground. But I, I, I mix things up sometimes. If I ever say anything that ends in ground, it's probably UPS ground. Uh, and again, that's so these don't blow up and they go in planes. I think now you can technically send some of this uh, pressurized stuff, first class mail. I think I remember seeing that. 
Um, but I do not, I don't know for sure. Anyway, it's bad advice anyways. Don't don't risk it. Just send it UPS ground. Next was a vintage Inesco Precious Moments animated swing music box plays always. 40 bucks for this. That surprised a lot of people. You wouldn't think these go for more than like 5 or 10 bucks. I paid 4 bucks for it at a Goodwill. Uh, it was kind of a pain to, to package up and ship because of all the little delicate pieces. I took a toothbrush to this after I sold it because the, all this little like orangish gray stuff you see on the leaves, that's dust. I did not clean it before I took the picture. I thought it was just like the way it's supposed to look. No, it was dusty. So I cleaned it off with a toothbrush and Lysol and uh, shipped it to them, bubble wrapped and packing peanuts. Really all I was worried about is this snapping off. So that went thick bubble wrap uh, and then everything else in the box was just void filler. So packing peanuts or crumpled up newspaper or craft paper. And finally, I gotta list more of these. I have like eight or eight or 10 more of these to list. A uh, sealed Nintendo, uh, Sega Genesis game, but with damage to the seal, right? So I said factory sealed, but not mint like new, even though some people might sell it as new. It wouldn't have gone for more if I had put new as the condition I think 60 bucks for like an old sports game like this that you can't really grade or you can grade, but it's not going to grade in a way that significantly increases the value. At least I don't think it will. 60 bucks is like, that's like what they, maybe that was retail back in the day. I don't know. That just seems to be like the number that a lot of collectors are willing to buy on a title like this, like NHL 97 or like an old golf game uh, or anything that's not like has a serious consumer base so like if this was a sealed sonic game it had gone for a lot more than 60 bucks but it's just nhl 97 which is a good game um but nothing that really has that extra collectible value so that was one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven things i sold hope you enjoyed the video hope you learned something hope uh you enjoyed my presence and company if you're new please subscribe if you're not new Thanks for stopping by and comment below with what your best sale of the week was or what you thought my best sale out of all these items was. Doesn't have to be the highest sale or the, the most expensive sale, but just what you liked the most. See you guys later.